Welcome to the online version of the Healthy Heart Support Group for people with heart failure. My name is Sarah Lee Thomas. I have a master's degree in nutrition. I'm a registered dietitian with about 20 years experience and this was recorded in July of 2011. Congestive heart failure, um, often called CHF, um, and more f often now is just called heart failure, but many of us are more familiar with this term CHF or congestive heart failure. So what is heart failure? In heart failure, the heart fails to pump as well as it should. As a result, the body doesn't get as much blood and oxygen that it needs to work well, and so the body asks the heart, work harder. So the heart tries to respond and the heart either gets larger or beats faster or both, but the heart has trouble keeping up. So fluids can build up in the legs, in the abdomen, in your stomach region, and around your lungs, making it hard to breathe or hard to walk and making you feel tired. So think about what does heart failure feel like to you? How does it affect your energy, your breathing, your walking, sleeping, fluid buildup, appetite. Here are some comments from other people with heart failure. One said, I'm always tired and I can't catch my breath. Or my legs are so swollen I have a hard time walking. I'm so tired I can't sleep and my chest feels heavy. Or it really it felt like I was walking in water. I had to stop and catch my breath. And then my heart pounds really, really hard. And when I lay down, I have trouble breathing. I can actually, I can hear myself breathing. And man, I can't, I am unable to climb the stairs without stopping. I just go along and will suddenly feel really, really tired. So think about um, how heart failure affects you and how you feel. One of the most important things that you can do if you learn nothing else, this is the thing to remember, this slide here, is to watch out for rapid weight gain. Because when you rapidly gain weight from one day to another or one week to another, that rapid weight gain is not body fat, it's actually fluid weight. So you've gained extra fluid, which means it's harder to walk, harder to breathe. And if you're not careful, that can actually lead you to land in the hospital. So how do you keep an eye on this? How do you prevent that? Every morning, this is what you want to do. Weigh yourself every morning the same way after going to the bathroom and before drinking or eating anything, and you want to wear pretty much the same clothes. And then you say, did I gain more than two or three pounds since yesterday? If you did, you need to call your health care provider or your nurse. And if you say, okay, today's Tuesday, man, my weight's up five pounds since last Tuesday, then you also need to call your health care provider or nurse. So if you weigh yourself every morning and keep an eye on your weight, this can help you get help early and avoid more serious problems that could lead to hospitalizations. Now when you gain one pound of fluid weight, how much is that? That is 16 ounces of fluid, or two cups, two measuring cups, or this is familiar cup, the 16 ounce cup that we use quite a bit on picnics and stuff. So that much fluid is how much fluid weight you've gained when you gain one pound of fluid. So how much is three pounds? So remember, if you gained three pounds since yesterday, that is fluid weight, and that equals three large 16 ounce glasses. So that's 48 ounces of fluid. And when you've gained three pounds since yesterday, that's again, when you need to call the, your doctor or your nurse to, to get some advice about what you should do. Um, because this much extra fluid is a lot of extra work on the heart. So three pounds would be three of these large glasses. So what are the two things that you can do to be on the road to a healthy heart? The first one is just think of your heart like the engine in a car. And your your engine, your heart, has heart failure. So it doesn't work as it doesn't work as strongly, it doesn't work as well. So you don't want to load up the car, and likewise you don't want to load up your heart. So you want to lighten the load so your heart has less work to do. And what gives your heart extra work to do is extra fluid on your body. The more you collect fluid, the harder your heart has to work, and your heart is already having trouble just doing the normal job it has to do. So to lighten the load, you really focus on sodium fluid, and that's what we're going to talk about first. 
after that, we're going to talk about clearing the road. So clearing the road, making it easier for the blood to flow, that involves keeping your blood vessels clear. You have blood vessels in your body, think of them like pipes that, um, and like any pipes, they can get clogged up. And what clogs them up is blood cholesterol. So we're going to focus on the kinds of fat to eat and good sources of fiber so we can help keep our arteries clear. Here is a summary of the things that you can do to help your heart if you have congestive heart failure. Number one is keep track of your weight daily. If your weight goes up two or three pounds since yesterday, you need to get a hold of your provider or nurse. Get early intervention, early help, and you can avoid more serious problems. Also, if you've gained about five pounds um, since last week, so a week ago, that's another reason that you'd want to call and see if you, they want you to adjust your medicines or do other things or come in. So that's number one, and it's important to remember. Also, take your medications regularly as prescribed. Um, believe it or not, if you don't take the medications, they don't do you any good. <laughs> so, um, so that's important. It is hard. You just have to kind of learn what little tricks you work for you to um, remember to take your medications regularly. Also, exercise is recommended by the doctor, so that can help. Um, but you don't want to do something that's not recommended. So it's, it's valuable, but make sure that it's um, something that your doctor knows that you're doing and um, is suitable for you and your medical condition. Manage your blood pressure and your blood cholesterol and your blood sugar levels. All of these things affect the health of your heart. If they are high or abnormal, then that can lead to more heart damage, and that makes everything even that much more difficult and the heart failure worse. And so these are things to keep an eye on. Limit alcohol and avoid tobacco. And limit fluids if it's recommended. Remember, not everybody has a limit, but if you are recommended a limit, that's important. And food-wise, limit sodium and make healthy food choices. These can really help you have um, better outcomes, better quality of life, and feel better. For additional information, there's several good websites out there, and these are mentioned for educational reasons. Um, it doesn't, I'm not implying endorsement, that, that these are just some additional resources. We have no editorial control over these. But the DASH diet, and that's the study that found that, yeah, you could uh, not cut down your sodium at all, as long as you, um, for some people anyway, didn't cut down their sodium at all, but they increased the fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, and fish, lean meats, and their blood pressure dropped in two weeks as much as taking a medication. So if you want more information on that, that, that strategy where, okay, I don't want to cut down my sodium, but maybe you can add some healthy foods and help, help your blood pressure. Also, if you want a calorie-controlled, personalized eating plan, you can go to choosemyplate.gov, put in your, your age, your sex, your weight, your height, um, and it will um, actually calculate a and come up with a calorie controlled eating plan that tells you well how many servings of fruit, how many vegetables, how many whole grains um, for all those important food groups and also controlled overall for calories. So it's a really useful site. And of course the American Heart Association, AmericanHeart.org and the Heart Hub has the Heart Hub has some actually sections specifically on heart failure. So lots of resources out there. Um, here are some additional resources, some websites. Uh, again, these are mentioned for educational reasons. They're not implying endorsement. We have no control over ed editorial content. But um, there's lots of useful um, websites out there. Um, the Heart Failure Society of America is one of those. And um, there's also the Heart Failure Society of America Incorporated, so slightly different. And the American Dietetic Association and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, NIH which is National Institute of Health. So lots of good resources out there to um, get informed and stay informed.